Hello everyone, I'm your hostess with the mostest, 8 Second Gaming, and in today's video we're going to be talking about how you can start to die less in Apex. Because, let's be real with ourselves, some of your KDs are looking sadder than my Tinder DMs. But by the end of this video, you'll be able to identify some issues that you're having and start to work them into your game to not die as much. But if you guys like these types of videos and you're really looking to improve at Apex, then you need to check out the Game Leap website. Over there, we have top level coaches who know what it takes to play at the highest ranks in the game, giving you the best guides and courses ever. We're making 10 plus videos a week there that are site exclusive, so you won't find them anywhere else. And right now, now we're actually having a very limited time sale, so click the link in the description, pick yourself up a membership, use code RANK50 to get that discount and start to climb today. But okay, let's jump into the reasons that you're dying, and the first one that we have to talk about is that you may be using the wrong legend. Now this actually doesn't matter if it's a legend that you main, or maybe you bounce from legend to legend, but if you're using the wrong one, you're actually going to be hurting yourself quite a bit. If you don't mesh well with a specific legend, and you're not using them to their specific playstyle, then you're actually not going to be getting the most out of them, and you're going to be dying with them a lot. Like take me for example, I'm more of a support style player, that's why I enjoy playing Watson or Gibraltar, people like that. But if I get on Horizon or Wraith, I am absolutely terrible because I fall into the same habits of playing as a support player. Even though Horizon and Wraith are really strong right now, I just can't seem to get them to work, and I'm sure that a lot of other people that are watching this video have that issue as well. Meta is good to pay attention to, and you should be looking at what legends are strong in the game currently, but also make sure that your playstyle fits with them. If you don't, you're just going to continue to die with them. Now with that being said, you could also go for a playstyle change where you try to adapt yourself into more of an aggressive if you're more of a support style player, or maybe even back off a little bit if you're playing someone like Watson. But that's a lot easier said than done. Going through an entire playstyle shift isn't very easy. So if that's something that you want to do, keep that in mind that you're going to be dying a lot more often while you go through that kind of exchange phase. Now the next tip that we need to be talking about is under using movement in the game. Apex has fantastic movement and you see a lot of people absolutely abuse it. But if you're dying a lot, it's probably because you're under utilizing some of the movement techs that are in the game. Movement is everywhere. You have to have movement to get from spot to spot on the map, or if you're getting shot at, you need to have some jukes so you're not taking as many bullets, or even just having the most efficient way from point A to point B. Sometimes that takes a wall bounce or a zip bounce or something like that. Now, don't get me wrong here, guys. I'm not saying that it has to be flat. Flashy. You don't have to be pulling out every single movement tech in the game, but you need to start utilizing just the simplest movement techs. I am not a movement player by any means necessary. If you guys watch my stream over on Twitch TV slash 8 Second Gaming, you'll know that I very rarely pull out a flashy movement tech, but I'm still able to play at a very high level. And the reason for that is because I use very simplistic movement techs. I'm talking wall bounces, slides, slide jumps, just the bare minimum. And for all the console players out there, just know that those movement techs are accessible on controller too. The simplest things can save your life, like sliding around a corner so that your enemy misses his first shot and you can land that crucial PK hit. Movement is one of the most important things that will keep you guys alive in a game. Now the next thing that we need to go over is ego peeking. Stop peeking people if you're getting beamed from them guys. This is one thing that I personally see a lot in the game. I will completely rail someone and then they will peek me again 2 seconds later when they have 20 HP. If you get absolutely destroyed while peeking someone, it's better to just heal up and wait to re-peek them. Or heal up, move to a different spot and peek them from a new angle so that they're not trained on you already. There are so many different ways to peek in Apex that you don't have to be re-peeking the same angle, especially if you're getting destroyed, and especially if you're low health. This is a habit that a lot of people are going to have to break, and it's actually one that I even find myself falling into constantly. Sometimes, I gotta admit, I get a little cocky, I try to go for a re-peek when I'm like half health, and I do get punished for it, and as soon as it happens, I'm like, oh wait, that was stupid, I know better. This isn't something that comes naturally, you're going to have to catch yourself doing it in game and really shake your head for doing it. Over time, when you stop yourself from doing it enough times, before you do it, your body will just instinctively tell you no. But this isn't going to be something that happens overnight, you're going to have to work on it, so be prepared for that. Now, Next up, tip number 4 is identifying patterns. A lot of times when people die in game and I'll ask them what happened, they'll say, oh I don't know, because they just weren't paying attention. When you die, you really need to be able to analyze the situation so that you can start to identify patterns in your gameplay when you die. See if you're making the same mistake over and over and that leads to you dying because if it's a simple mistake that you can just easily fix, that will then immediately lead to less deaths. The best way to identify if you're falling into the same
same pattern is to do something called VOD reviewing. This is basically where you just watch your gameplay back and see what happened. And every single platform can VOD review. Everybody has a way to record games. On PlayStation and Xbox, there's built-in record features. Or if you're on PC, you can use something called OBS to record your games. After that, once you die, you can go back in, see what happened, and then start to work on yourself as a player. And this is actually one of the ways that pro players go over their gameplay so that in scrims and tournaments, they can identify what they're doing wrong and fix it for future games. So if pro players do it, it'll work for you guys too. Now, tip number five is people don't really pay attention when they're dropping, and this leads to them dying off drop a ton. When you initially leave the dropship, make sure to be free looking around so you can see who's coming near you. You have to be aware if you're being landed on, because if you're being landed on, you know that there's potentially three people that are going to try and punch you out. Or you'll know where the enemy team is landing, so as soon as you get a gun out of a crate, you can start to look to potentially pick one of them off. Also, you need to be knowing if there's teams nearby, because if you get into a fight and it's going to get third partied, you have to know that. I see it all the time when I'm either watching someone or in my own games, where someone will die and they'll be like, oh my god, I didn't even know that there was a third team here, because they didn't look around. This is one of the easiest things to change in your game that will help you drastically in these situations. Seriously, all you need to do is free look while dropping and you will survive a lot more often. And now tip number six is people draw fights out way longer than they have to be. One thing that I see gets people killed a lot, especially in ranked, is they don't know how to end fights quickly. They don't know when to press advantages, they don't know when to push, and they really just don't know how to control the flow of fights. So they end up getting into these really long drawn out poke battles with enemy teams, where they're both just kind of sitting in one building or one area sending shots back and forth at each other. Somebody might get cracked, somebody might take a lot of damage, and nobody pushes still. And the reason that this is a huge issue and gets people killed a lot is because these long drawn out fights then welcome third, fourth, and fifth parties because they can just hear these shots going. And the third parties are probably a lot more aggressive than the teams that are poking, so as soon as they come in, they're immediately steamrolling these teams and then people get upset that they got third partied. If you're going to be getting into a fight, you need to be able to end that within 30 to 40 seconds. Anything longer than that, you're going to be seeing third parties rolling in and then it's going to be a complete and total mess. If you don't think that you can end that fight that quickly, then just don't take the fight. It's not worth it. Keep rotating. But now I want to throw this question out to you guys. Are there issues that you guys see in your own gameplay that you just can't fix? Let me know in the comments down below. Maybe you guys will start to inspire the next Game Leap video. But with all this being said, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new and now you'll start to die a lot less. And if you guys are interested in staying up to date with the latest and greatest Apex Legends tips, tricks, and news, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. Once again, I'm 8 Second Gaming, and I will see you in the next one.